Thank you. Oh, it's always busy there in the morning. Get your coffee and get out. It's not like that. They're actually pretty nice. Ugh. Considering how stressed that stressful that job must be in the morning. Man, they work fast though. Anyway, yeah, it's my last day at this uh, job that I'm doing right now. And I am sad about it. I like the guys there. Uh, I got along with them well. Uh, I think we got along well. And uh, I made some good friends, I think. Made some good friends. But, like I said, next week, Monday. Uh, like I was telling you yesterday and last week, next week, Monday, we go back to more familiar pastors. I'm uh, looking forward to sharing more with you on Monday. I'm going to sit down with them in the office and we're going to work things out. And uh, I'm going to be home every night and every weekend, as far as I know. <laughs> That's what they told me. I don't really know what uh, to expect, but we'll be driving trucks and I think we'll be hauling a little bit more interesting freight. Uh, you know, maybe there will be some flatbeds. They said it'd be a lot of like 53 foot van freight, I think. I don't know. I saw that they got a straight truck, like uh, a five ton since I left. I saw that wandering around Winnipeg yesterday. I was like, well, when did you get one of those? But I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in the tractor trailer. But we'll find out next week. First, we have a weekend in front of us. Let's focus on that because it's going to be fun. We're going to do nothing. Well, boys and girls. They're sending us off well. Our last day here today and we get to drive the green caddy again. Right on. So it's going to be a nice smooth riding day. We're off to Rosenort, out in Janzit. Got to remember that this 10 speed has a little bit of a different shifting pattern than the 13 speeds I'm used to. One, two, getting ourselves on the road here. Three, four, Five, now six is over here. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, still getting used to this transmission. <laughs> One more. One more. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ten. And there you go. So it's pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No splitter. It's really weird for me. It took me like half the day yesterday to get used to this. There's no splitter. So you can definitely tell this isn't my uh everyday truck just because I haven't got the shifting quite exactly 100% fine-tuned yet it usually takes me a day or two and then it you know just you just slip right into a new truck just like that but it just takes a little getting used to I haven't driven a 10 speed like this in a long time I'm talking like since 2010 That's 11 years so yesterday it was driving me crazy because it was taking me forever to uh, go from fifth. I would always jump it into seventh and skip sixth because you don't use that in, in high range or low range, high range on a 13 speed. This is a little bit of a different configuration, but uh, we got used to it pretty quick. I mean, like by the end of yesterday, I think I was getting pretty, pretty solid with it already, but uh, yeah, the timing and everything, that all just comes with uh, time. Maybe a day or two and it's all good. And next Monday I'll be in another different truck. And I don't know if that's gonna be a manual, an automatic, or a 10-speed manual, 13-speed manual, 18-speed manual, I don't know. I can drive them all, I don't know. Whatever truck they put me in, I'm happy. I'm just happy to be driving trucks. 
Like I said earlier, we're on our way to Rosenort, Manitoba, which is Nyanzi on the other side of the river. Uh, Mennonite territory on the uh, west side of the Red River. We're on the east side right now, where I'm from and where I live. And we'll bring them their stuff. We'll have an empty trailer and we'll probably uh, zip into Winnipeg from there. So I've got this stuff all moved to the back already here. I'm waiting for them to come with their forklift and grab it from me. There goes another one there. I guess they're all busy right now. We're going to get this unloaded and probably head into Winnipeg from here. All right. I got a head nod. I got acknowledged. So I think they're coming right away. Yeah, there he comes. All right. There's four. Said the cat in the hat. Oh, I can't breathe with this thing on. All right, empty trailer. We're gonna stop down the road and give her a sweep yet. I guess I should radio in first, eh? Ask where they want me to go. I'm assuming Winnipeg. I think I have figured out the mystery of this green truck I'm driving. I think I figured it out. Have any of you figured it out already? What this truck used to be? Or who it used to run for? Huh? Huh? Think, think. Who's got green trucks? This color. Can you see it in my mirrors there? Or see my hood? If I put my head up high enough, can you see it? I'll give you a hint. In the bottom left corner of the windshield there, there is a sticker of some sort that says New Brunswick on it. I'll give you a sec. I think, I think I am 99.357% sure that this truck used to be a Midland truck. I believe Midland is based in Nova, uh, not Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to mix you up based in New Brunswick, and they have green trucks like this. And they run Freightliner Cascadias. So I'm guessing this was a Manitoba-based Midland truck, day cab, that they traded in for a brand spanking new one. And now here I am, test driving this for my boss on my last day and yesterday. And so far, it looks like Midland took really good care of it. 
it is in good shape. It, uh, it's, the inside is all intact, not torn apart and not damaged at all. Uh, the only, like I said yesterday, the only criticism I have of this truck is that at highway speeds here, I don't know if you can see it on my hand, probably not. The wheels are a little bit out of balance. That's all. It could be the rims, it could be the wheels. Remember, I've dealt with bouncing tires almost my whole trucking career already. Right from that Freightliner Century that I owned for a while, and then that Volvo I had had the same problems, and it seems every truck I get into gets an unbalanced tire. You gotta be very careful with these truck tires. You know, if you hit a curb or you hit a pothole too hard, it'll put the tire out around, and then you got a shaking truck, and it's drives me nuts, but it's not so bad. It's not that bad. Uh, that's the only criticism. Other than that, this truck is running great. It runs smooth. It runs quiet. My review of it would be, uh, you know, four stars. Four stars. Uh, Taken into account that it's an older truck, it's got 730,000 kilometers on it. That's about 500,000 miles. And uh, the only thing is that it shakes a little bit on the highway, but that's fixable. If it's just a tire or a rim, that's fixable. It's, that's easy. Yeah, I, I think it used to, I think it used to be. Just because I figured it out this morning, I looked down and I was like, why is there a New Brunswick sticker on the windshield? New Brunswick, we're in Manitoba. I was like 5,000 kilometers away, like 6,000, however far away New Brunswick is. Oh, green. Cascade, I get it. So I think we figured it out. I think there might be two tires that are round. It's definitely a steer tire. I'm My best guess is the driver's side steer tire out of round or the rim is out of balance. And one of the drives in the back. So the only problem would be figuring out which one is shaking and then just replace it and you got a nice smooth ride again. But anyways, I was right. We are headed back into Winnipeg. We're going to fill this trailer up for the last time. The weather out that way looks nasty. And it's just started to snow, just as I started talking. Oh no. That's a low bridge up there. Wow, glad we're not going that way. So we're going away from that nasty weather, headed east into uh, Transcona. Guess we're gonna be dealing with a little bit of snow today. I've gotta go and pick up a few skids, and then we're headed out with them. Uh, we're going back to Rosenort today. Uh, Otterburn again. Oh, uh, where was the other one? Uh, St. Anne or Landmark or Steinbeck area, somewhere in there. And we end off in Steinbeck. And then that's it. C'est fini. That is all. Finito. My last load. 400 meters, turn left onto Pandit Road. We're just in the St. Boniface Industrial Area right now. We want to go over to the Transcona Industrial Area. This is an interesting little town in southern Manitoba coming up here. One of those towns that you never know existed unless if you actually drive through it. This is uh, Highway 205, Provincial Highway. It's east of the Red River. And this is Aubigny. 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 Tiny little railway town by the looks of it. Or is it a river town? Probably a river town because we just crossed over the Red River there. This is probably settled way back in the day when we were coming up the river. I don't know if it's a French town or what. Aubigny. Does that sound French? Aubigny? Every town has a church though, so there's the church. It doesn't look like a big Catholic cathedral. Usually if it's an old French town, it's got a big Catholic church. Oh, but there's a crucifix and that's Catholic. There. When you have a cross with an actual figure of Jesus hanging on it, that's called a crucifix. And that's typically uh, a symbol of the Catholic uh, denomination of Christianity. The Protestants have uh, an empty cross. And do you know why the difference? Because there's nothing wrong with either one, first of all. Nothing wrong with either one. However, the Catholic denomination of Christianity focuses more on the death of Christ and the price that was paid by his death. Uh, and they want to remember that. Uh, and the Protestants, 
they want to focus more on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and that the cross is now empty. So they focus more on the resurrection. Two different ways of looking at the same thing, right? So at Easter time, uh, you'll see that Catholics will uh, make more of an emphasis on the death of Christ and Protestants will make more of an emphasis on the resurrection. Now, I'm not trying to generalize every Catholic and every Protestant here, so it probably sort of uh, crosses over sometimes, and uh, it could be uh, either or sometimes, but generally, I'm just generalizing here, forgive me, uh, generally that's what it is. A crucifix with Jesus on the cross is Catholic, empty cross, Protestant. I have a crucifix that I hang around my neck even though I am Protestant. That's why I say there is some cross, there is some crossover. Both mean the exact same thing. They're just symbols, right? They're just symbols to, to uh, make you remember. It's been a busy day, rush, rush, rush. So I haven't been able to chat much, but uh, we're done. We're on our way back. And there's been a few developments weather-wise. Looks like we're hitting it, heading into a little bit of a snowstorm tonight. That's fine with me, because it's the weekend. Snow away. Make sure you got all the roads clear for Monday. That's all I ask. I'm gonna bring this truck back, park it, tuck it in for night, park the trailer. Say our goodbyes to whoever's there and uh, head on home. Texas, about that weather we sent you uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, there wasn't a return to sender option on that. You were supposed to keep that. Uh, I see you have sent it back. Um, it's kind of kind of rude to yeah. send back a gift that we sent you, but uh, it's okay. I understand. Maybe it was uh -huh. a little bit much sending you our weather, and uh, you decided, you know, just send it right back. Maybe, uh -huh. I mean, I don't know. But here it is. It's back here. It's winter uh -huh. time again here. I thought it was springtime. No, it's Manitoba. It's not springtime. What are you crazy? Uh -huh. Something. It's not even March. Oh, I'll just about to fall back on the bed and I remember I'm wearing a good shirt that I don't want all full of dog hair. Sorry guys. <laughs> so I just realized for the past couple of days or the past week or so, I think he just jumped off the bed. Rude. You're not allowed to do that, bud. Watch your back, man. It's an expensive spine you got there already. What are you doing just jumping off the bed? Brad. Get on the ball. Oh. We have to be very careful with him that he doesn't do that often. We try not to let him do it at all, but like you just saw, it happens from time to time. It, he's had that uh, IVDD in his back a couple of years ago when he had that surgery. And he's been like a new puppy ever since, but we have to be very careful with him. That's why we got steps for him up to the couch. Not that he uses them. He has to be told to use them. Yeah. You're a brat. And there's this guy who just like belly flops off the couch all the time. Well, he lands on his feet like a cat, but... You're a bit of a daredevil, aren't you? In pretty good shape for an old for an old man. Yeah, I think he's pushing like at least 15. He was 13 when we got him, apparently. I don't know how they knew that, but... Yeah, we don't know. Ballparking, I guess? I don't know. He's about one year old in spirit. But he sleeps like an old man. He does. And he growls like an old man. Yeah, he's grumpy. <laughs> Likes to nip. Yeah. So what I was trying to say there before that uh, was that for the last few days, I've just found out now that the stabilization on this camera was somehow turned off by accident. So I'm sorry for the shaky video the past couple of days. I was wondering why it was while I was editing, because I did two, two videos at once. And uh, by the time I realized, it was too late. So I made sure it was on now, and I'll make sure it's on. Tomorrow, Monday, we start our uh, our new gig. Well, old gig, new gig, old new gig. We'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to go in there Monday morning, have a couple of meetings, and then we'll uh, talk after that. Anyways, I hope you guys are going to have a good weekend. I guess it's Saturday already by the time you're watching this, or maybe even Sunday. Hope you're making the most of it. We'll see you again next week. Take care.